Hello jazz guitar fans, I'm Mike Hayes back with more Sonic Adventures on the Guitar Fingerboard. Well, they're back. The dynamic duo of the augmented chord and the whole tone scale are back. To be honest, they never really did leave the building. And this dynamic duo have such a lot to offer the jazz guitarist that we really can't study them too often or too much. In today's session, we're going to look at how musicians such as Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn applied the augmented chord to their compositions. We're also going to look at cool ways of creating jazz lines out of the whole tone scale. It's really exciting stuff. So, without any further ado, let's hop in and get started on our work on the augmented chord and the whole tone scale. I know you can't wait. In this session, we'll be discussing the application of augmented chords as upper extensions of dominant seventh chords. And this approach will help us achieve the Duke Ellington, Billy Strayhorn type of sound. But before we jump into the arrangement side of things, let's take a moment to familiarise ourselves with some guitar fingerboard maps. And what I mean by that is some of the various ways that we can view the augmented triad on the guitar fingerboard. Let's begin with the root position C augmented triad. And next we have the first inversion, followed by the second inversion, and then we have the octave root position C augmented triad. And now here's a lateral view of the C augmented triads based on a C augmented triad on strings 6, 5 and 4. Here's another lateral view of the C augmented triad, this time beginning with the first inversion C augmented triad, meaning we have an E on string 6, and then working our way across the fingerboard with the various inversions of the augmented chord. And now here's one more lateral view of the C augmented triad, this time we're beginning with the second inversion of the C augmented triad. Therefore we're starting with a G sharp on string 6 and then working our way across the fingerboard. OK, it's time to practice the C whole tone scale. Here we go. this next diagram, the augmented triads are indicated by red dots, and the notes of the whole tone scale that are not part of the C augmented triad are marked by blue dots. Our next project will be to link the augmented chords together with notes from the whole tone scale. In this example, I'm thinking of C7th resolving to F. Therefore our augmented triads plus the notes from the whole tone scale are providing a C7th altered type sound. Let's have a listen. In this next example, I'm playing the same thing two different ways. The first time through, I'm playing on the same string grid. The second time through, I'm moving across two different string sets. The chord progression we'll be using in this session is the first eight bars of Take the A Train. Now depending on which version you're playing from, the chord in bar 3 could be indicated as D7 flat 5 or D7 sharp 4 and so on. I'm going to refer to this chord as a D9 sharp 11. And here's one way that we could play that chord. And now here's the same chord, 
only this time revealing a C augmented triad as part of this chord. And this is what we mean by playing these augmented chords as an upper extension. Now if I went through every note of that chord and just identified what the relationship of each note is with the D9 sharp 11, we'd find that the G sharp would be the sharp 11, E would be the ninth, C would be the seventh, F sharp would be the third, and D would be the root. Now to prepare you for what's coming up, I'm going to play certain triads over the first eight bars of the chord progression for Take the A Train. Did you hear how that augmented chord, when it's layered over a D7 background, produces the effect of a D9 sharp 11? Here's another example where I'm using augmented chords to create interest and movement. And once again, we're playing over the chord progression for the first eight bars of A Train. Okay, let's leave augmented chords at that for the moment. I hope you can hear some of the potential though. We'll be revisiting these fabulous chords in future sessions. Right then, let's turn our attention to the whole tone scale. And like any other scale, if we just practice it up and down, it will become very predictable and boring. So let's have a look at one of the creative ways that we could practice the whole tone scale. I'm going to suggest that we practice it in tritones. Now, what I mean by that is I'm going to start with C and then select the flattened fifth of C, which would be G flat. Then I'm going to go to the note E and play its flattened fifth. And by doing this, we'll be creating a type of zigzag effect. I'm going to begin by playing just these four notes, C, G flat, E, B flat. And I'm going to treat these four notes as if they were part of a C seventh altered chord, which of course they would be. And then what I'm going to do is resolve it to an F major seventh. Okay, let's have a listen to that first. Can you hear by playing that F major 7th, we give that scale run a context, we create a harmonic environment, instead of being just a set of random notes. OK, let's continue that idea a little bit further. I'm going to take the next four notes and do the same thing. So the next set of four notes would be G sharp, then its flattened fifth, which would be D, then C, going to G flat. And then once again, we'll finish with an F major 7. And once 
Once again, in this next example, I'm just following that same process, working down the scale in tritones. And the idea is that you can stop at any point in the scale and play a chord. I'm going to do the same thing again, I'm just extending the scale and finishing with F major 7. Here's that same scale again, only this time over two octaves and I'm finishing on an F major 7 flat 5 this time. Throughout this video, I've been referring to these triads as C augmented triads. But as we know, they could also be named E augmented or G sharp augmented. We've also discovered that when we overlay a C augmented triad over a D dominant seventh, we get the effect of a D9 sharp 11. So a good idea is to take this scale practice that we're doing and see how we could apply it to different situations. For example, I could think of this run, this whole tone run that we're creating, I could think of it as a D7 altered run. So instead of finishing on an F chord, I could finish on a G major or G minor chord. And my thinking there is that D7 would normally resolve to G. OK, let's have a listen to that idea. I'm going to play that same run, only this time finishing on G minor 6. Well, that's it for today, folks. I do hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I hope there's something in this lesson that'll help you develop your own musical style on guitar. If you enjoyed this session and felt you got some value out of it and you'd like to support this channel, there's a link in the description below this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the good stuff. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a like. It really helps us out. Until next time, all the very best with your guitar playing. Bye for now.